In this section, we're going to see how to set up a control surface within Sonar. We're going to do this in three different ways. We're going to connect an MCU using the Mackie control surface protocol. Then we're going to connect the MIDI control section of an Allen & Heath ZR16 using both the ACT MIDI controller protocol to control the rotaries and faders and the Cakewalk generic surface to connect the ZR16S transport controls. We'll see how to use MIDI Learn to assign physical controls to a parameter within Sonar and we'll then see how to use ACT to control plugins and reassign those controls using ACT Learn. I'm going to assume that you've already connected your MIDI devices correctly as shown in the MIDI setup section earlier. To start with, we select preferences, either from the edit menu or by pressing P, and then select control surfaces from the MIDI section. You can see I already have a surface connected, and here is we will add more. We're going to click on the add new surface icon towards the top right. This opens the controller surface settings dialog box. The first surface we're going to add is the MCU. From the controller surface drop down, we're going to select the Mackie control option. Next, we need to assign the input port, and we do that by selecting the correct MIDI port from the input port drop down. In this case, it's the MCU, which is the friendly name assigned in my MIDI devices setup. As the MCU has motorized faders, it requires two way communication, and so I need to set an output port as well. This we do from the output port selection drop down. Once again, selecting the MIDI port that the device is attached to. If your device doesn't require two way communication, you can leave this set at none. And once that's done, we'll click on OK. Now we can see the surface that I've just added. From left to right, it shows the controller surface protocol selected, the import that it is assigned to, and the out port, if any. These can be changed from here as well using the relevant drop down boxes. The Mackie control protocol is not compatible with ACT and is therefore unavailable to be used with that. WAI stands for Where Am I? And if you check this, you will see a coloured strip in the track view and console view to show which tracks or buses are currently being controlled by the surface. The WAI colour box allows you to choose the colour. The WAI display section allows you to choose whether the track view, console view, both or neither show that WAI strip. The control strips visible in section allows you to choose whether just the strips displayed in the track view, the console view or all strips are available to the surface for control. This becomes relevant if you have any hidden tracks or buses. The refresh frequency can be changed here, but 75 is fine for most surfaces. There is an options properties box available for further customization of the MCU surface. This is found under the utilities menu in the program's main menu, which we'll look at shortly. Now we're going to add the ZR16 as an act controller so that we can use its rotaries, faders and buttons to control plugins and instruments, as well as assign some of Sonar's commands to the controls. As before, we click on the add new controller surface icon and return to the controller surface settings dialog. If your controller surface has its own protocol, it will appear in this list and it's best to choose that. If it doesn't, as is the case with the ZR16, then the ACT MIDI controller should work fine. Again, I select the input port from the drop down, as it is the ZR16 is the first in my list, so it's already selected. The output port I shall set to none, and once again, click on OK. I only wish to use this surface for ACT control and therefore I'm going to deselect the WAI checkbox so I don't see that strip in the track or console view. I'll complete the ACT assignments from within the main program shortly. I now want to set up my Z's transport controls using the Cakewalk generic surface option. Once more, click on the add new controller icon and select the generic surface protocol from the drop down list. Once again, the input port needs to be set correctly, which it already is, and the output port can be set to none. Once that's done, click on OK once more, and again, deselect the WAI option. Now I can click on OK and return to the main program where we can finish setup of the surfaces. First, I'm going to set up the MCU. From the main program menu, select Utilities, 
and then select Mackie Control 1. Obviously, if you've used a different protocol, that's what we'll show here. This opens the Mackie Control Properties box, where I can set my preferred options and also configure the layout if I have more than one MCU or XT surface attached. Once the options have been set, they can be saved as a preset by clicking in the preset name box at the top, typing a name, and then clicking on the save icon. It's possible to have several presets, such as one for tracking, one for mixing, and then switch between them as required. Once that's done, I close the properties box. Next, I'm going to finish setting up the Z as an axe surface. I could select the properties box from the main utilities menu as I've just done, but this time we'll look at the act module of the control bar. If it isn't visible, you may need to right click on the control bar and show it, or possibly hide some of the other modules to bring it onto the screen. From this module, we can select the act MIDI controller from the selection box at the top. The properties box is opened by clicking on the icon at the bottom left of the module. And at the very top of this box, there's a preset selector, and it may be that your surface already has one set up. If it does, you can select that, and you should find that the rotaries, faders, or sliders and buttons are already assigned correctly. If there isn't a preset for your device, or you wish to change the one that there is, we can create or edit our own. The first thing we need to do is make sure that the physical controls on the surface are assigned to the correct cells within the ACT MIDI controller dialog. We can do this by turning, moving or pressing the control on the surface and we should see the corresponding cells parameter change. If it doesn't, we need to use MIDI Learn to assign it correctly. MIDI Learn is the process of teaching the ACT properties box which cell corresponds to which physical control on our controller. It is completely separate from ACT Learn, which we will look at later. To MIDI Learn, click in the lower half of the cell you wish to assign the control to. The top half of the cell should now read MIDI Learn and is waiting for me to move one of the controls on the controller. As soon as I do that, the MIDI Learn disappears and we return to the regular ACT dialog box. You may need to do this with all of your physical controls one by one. You will not be able to MIDI Learn the Shift plus button cells as these are just the shifted buttons. You can, however, assign a shift modifier key, which we do by clicking on the shift learn button and then pressing the physical control on the controller we wish to use as a shift modifier. Once all of the cells have had a control assigned, we're ready to use the surface as an act controller and we need to make sure that the act enable box is checked. Once that's done, the cells that are available for act assignment will turn blue and display any already assigned parameters. We can control whether cells are available to act or not by switching to the Options tab and making the choice for each control here. First select the control from the parameter column and then check or uncheck the Exclude this button from Act checkbox as required. Notice that there are four different banks for each controller group, allowing plenty of setup possibilities. This is also where you assign program commands to the buttons using the parameter drop down box to select the button and then the commands drop down selector to assign a command to that button. Again, note that there are four different banks available for assignment. The functions assigned to the rotaries and sliders can be changed here as well. As well as their behavior when being moved. If you set the capture mode to jump, as soon as you touch that control, the corresponding parameter will jump to match the control's position and setting. If you set it to match, the sonar parameter will not change until a physical control gets close to matching the parameter setting. Only then will it start to change. I personally find this a more intuitive way of setting for controls. There are several other options here to allow the controller to work how you want it, but if you're setting up an ACT controller as I am, we need to make sure that the ACT follows context checkbox is checked. Then when we click on a plugin, the surface will automatically be assigned to control whichever plugin or instrument has focus. As you can see, when I click on different pro channel modules, the ACT display updates to reflect that. If you wish to control one plugin, regardless of program focus, check the lock checkbox. It may be helpful to assign a button to those checkbox commands, which can be done using the button assignment method shown earlier. 
Remember that any button you assign to these commands will need to be excluded from ACT or you'll lose the ability to control them as soon as ACT becomes active. Other options here are Select Highlight Track, which means that clicking on a track in Sona will change the ACT module's focus to that track when in channel strip mode. The Defaults button will return all the options on this page to their default assignments and settings. Clear MIDI Learn will delete all of the MIDI Learn cell assignments that we set up earlier. And the MIDI Initialization section is there so that SysX messages can be sent to the controller. Some ACT presets need to do this to put the controller into the correct mode. There will be instructions in the comments field if this is the case. The Edit button allows us to edit and create these SysX messages if required. When using the controller to control Sonos tracks and buses, the Rotaries mode sets whether the Rotaries relate to the same parameter on multiple tracks using the multi-channel option, or multiple parameters on one track when in channel strip mode. The control group sets what strips are being controlled, either tracks, buses, or mains. All of this setup only needs to be done once and can then be saved as a preset. Again, we do that by typing a preset name in the Presets Name text area and then clicking on the Save icon. Now we're ready to control plugins and soft synths with our controller, but what do we do if a control doesn't work or doesn't control the plugin parameter that we expect? This is where we use Act Learn to teach the controller which plugin or synth parameter we want each physical control to respond to. Note that this is a completely different process to MIDI Learn we looked at earlier, although it may appear similar. We'll switch back to the main controllers pane. To Act Learn, we click on the Act Learn button, either in the plugin window if it has one, or in the Act Properties box here. Once selected, it will turn blue. Now we move the controls within the plugin one by one, and then move each physical control on the controller in the order we wish the controls to be assigned. For example, if I scroll to the compressor in the Pro Channel, First I move the input knob, then the attack, then the release, then the output. Then on my Z controller, I move from left to right the first rotary knob, the second, the third, and the fourth. Once I've done that, I click on the Act Learn button again. I'm now informed that four parameters and four controls were touched, and do I wish to keep those assignments? If we're happy, click on Yes, and those controls will now control the parameters that I want to control. This is reflected from within the ACT properties box. And as you can see, if I move the first rotary knob of my Z, the input parameter changes. The good news is, is that Sona will take an intelligent guess at the correct parameters for each control. So you only need to do this if controls aren't behaving in a logical method for you or aren't working correctly. ACT assignments don't need to be saved as they are saved automatically and will remain that way until changed using this ACT learn method. Once that is all done, we can close the ACT Properties dialog box and use our ACT controllers. Finally, we'll look at setting up the transport controls via the Cakewalk Generic Surface Properties box, which we can call up by using one of the methods shown previously. If required, track strip parameters can be chosen here, and a number of track strips can also be defined. ACT can also be set up here in a similar method to that shown with the ACT Properties box using the ACT Learn button towards the top right. We're going to set up the transport controls using MIDI Learn to assign physical controls to parameters. We do this by clicking on the global parameter that we wish to control, such as the play command. Press the button we wish to assign. Then click on the Learn button and this will assign that command to the pressed button on the surface. When we've completed all of the assignments, we can save as a preset by typing a name in the preset name field and clicking the save icon.